Hey G-Fans, GojiFan93 here, and welcome to a new top 10 list. Uh, in this list, I will be discussing my top 10 non-Godzilla movie monsters. So these are monsters that are not in Godzilla movies. Uh, Godzilla doesn't count. Um, any monster that was in the Godzilla movies don't count. But some monsters on this list have had their own movies that may have cameoed in a Godzilla movie. But they still count as their own monster on this list. So with that said, let's begin. Alright, so first on this list we have Gamora from the Ultraman series. Now, uh, I am not too familiar with Ultraman. Um, I've been trying to get into the series more and more. Um, I, I soon want to be able to watch all this, the shows and, and try to you know, get a good understanding of the franchise. Um, but the only series that I did finish all the way through was the first Ultraman series. And uh, Gamora, or yeah, Gamora, not Gamora, I'm thinking of Gamora Island on Facebook. Uh, Gamora um, is probably one of the more traditional kaiju in Ultraman. He's, the roar is pretty cool, the design is pretty cool. He's not really uh, super cheesy looking uh, like some of the other monsters are looking in, in the Ultraman series. Um, so yeah, for number 10 I would have to go with Gamora. Alright, for number 9 I'm going to go with Rodan. Now, this might be cheating a little bit, but because uh, he was in some Godzilla movies, but I'm talking about him in his own movie, Rodan from 1956. Um, and this, uh, he, you know, he counts as his own monster. And when I think of my top 10 monsters that I like, um, that I've seen, uh, Rodan, you know, he definitely sticks in my mind. Um, he's not my favorite monster, which is why he's high on the list, but, you know, nonetheless, he's a pretty cool kaiju. Um, you know, being able to fly around and his roar is pretty iconic. Uh, and I remember watching the film a very long time ago. Um, I need to actually rewatch it again, uh, real soon, but, uh, but yeah, Rodan would definitely be my number nine pick. Alright, for number 8, I'm gonna go with Mothra. Once again, kind of cheating, Mothra's been in many Godzilla films, but I'm talking about Mothra's, uh, her own movies. Um, the original one, I believe 1961? 1961 or 1962, I don't remember exactly, but uh, that, from that original, uh, her show, her only show of film, um, just her, her alone, and also the fantastic Mothra trilogy uh, from the Heisei series, so uh, from the, the 90s, and so I freaking love those movies. Uh, that actually got me a little bit in more uh, uh, liking to the Mothra character, um, and also the fact that Mothra had many different forms that she took in that in that film series, and I just, I really liked it. So um, Mothra, you know, definitely, you, you can't, I don't think you can have a monster list without mentioning Mothra in it, at least. And, you know, a lot of you guys know that Mothra's not my all-time favorite monster. She's not, but she does hold a place in this list because she just has to. Like I said, you can't have a monster's list without mentioning Mothra. So, um, she's just a really cool monster. She's, you know, really colorful. She's different. Um, she's a good guy, pretty much. Um, but she can also be very destructive at the same time. Uh, but yeah, so number eight, gotta take it, gotta give it to Mothra. Alright, number seven, uh, they're actually going to kind of continue with the Mothra trilogy, and I'm going to have Deskidora in it. Uh, yes, Deskidora, or Death Ghidorah, I think is another, another name for him. Um, once again, kind of a Godzilla-related character, because it's Ghidorah, the three-headed monster guy, but it was in a Mothra movie and not in a Godzilla movie, unless you kind of want to say Kaiser Ghidorah, but that's a different incarnation as well, with a different name. So, um, I'm talking about Desk Ghidorah from the first Rebirth of Mothra movie. Um, the first time I saw this thing on screen, I was like, holy crap, that looks freaking awesome. And I would love for these two, I would actually love Desk Ghidorah to fight Kaiser Ghidorah, I think that'd be pretty cool because they both have, they're both on four legs instead of two. Um, I think it'd be really cool. But, uh, but yeah, De Desk Ghidorah is really awesome and just to have that kind of character in a non-Godzilla movie um, is pretty cool. And I just really love the way the character looked, the roar, the design. I already talked about the look, but just everything about him was pretty cool. So definitely got to give him to number seven. Alright, number six, we're gonna go way back even before Godzilla was made, but actually the monster that inspired Godzilla, 
uh, Beast from 20,000 Fathoms, I believe that's the name. Yes, the Beast from 20,000 Fathoms. Um, I used to call, I think I used to call him a creature from 20,000 Fathoms, but whatever. Um, yes, this monster here. This monster was, I mean, this was like in the 50s before Godzilla was made, and I know that this monster actually helped inspire the creators to make Godzilla. Um, part of the inspiration, not all of it, but part of it. Um, and this monster was just so cool to see. I believe the animation, I, I, I think it was a Ray Harryhausen film. I might be uh, incorrect on that, but I know it was during that time where Ray Harryhausen was doing a lot of monster movie stuff with, you know, stop motion and all that. So, um, but it looked great, you know, for stop motion film, it looked awesome. I, I, I haven't seen it in a while. I remember just watching it when I was little with my dad, um, but uh, definitely that monster has always stuck out in my mind as a really cool monster slash kaiju. You can call him a kaiju because he's a giant monster, so it, it just, you know, he was out before the term kaiju was popular, so, but he kind of counts as a kaiju now, so, uh, but yeah, definitely uh, the beast from 20,000 Fathoms, gotta make him on this list. All right, at number five, we're gonna give it to Gamera. Yes, the, the, uh, savior of all the children or, or whatever but I, as i like to look at him as the gamera trilogy gamera i love um that that trilogy got me into at least somewhat liking the character not too much um i mean the show series you guys know i, I don't really like that series i kind of hate it in fact um except for like the first two films um but overall gamera is such a it, he is a ripoff of godzilla but he's but the way they ripped him off, it was a successful ripoff, I'd say, like, because he was still kind of his own original idea at the same time. So, I mean, a giant turtle that flies, spins around with jets coming out of his legs and arms and just flying off and big gigantic fireballs coming out of his mouth and out of his stomach in the Heisei series. And, um, and then the Millennium series, well, at least the one Millennium film um, with uh, Toto, but, you know, we still call him Gamera. Uh, that was pretty cool, too, so... Once again, can't have a giant monsters list without Gamera being mentioned in it. So, uh, yes, Gamera, number five, gotta be my pick. At number four, we're gonna continue with the Gamera series. We are going to talk about Iris. Yes, Iris, Once when I saw this monster, I instantly fell in love with it. It's, it's, it's such a cool design. It's, it's such a, a unique design, and it's so... Just the 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 concept behind him was so cool, and the and I love Revenge of Iris. That's one of my all-time favorite kaiju movies now, and uh, that monster is just so cool. It's such a cool villain for Gamera to fight, and just the way it looked. I mean, mostly the way it looked. Like that's what I really loved about it, um, and uh, just the effects with him and all that. It just looked fantastic. So definitely got to give it to Iris. All right, coming in at number three, we're gonna go, I'm gonna be cheating a little bit again, um, the Pacific Rim monster, the Kaiju. Now, I'm not talking about the Jaegers, because they're not Kaiju, we're talking about monsters in this one, the Kaiju uh, part of it. Um, but uh, yes, the, the Pacific Rim Kaiju, there's not one of those monsters that I that I can pick out of those monsters. Like, they're, they're all, the way Pacific Rim like reignited the kaiju genre and the way that it, it made an original concept with kaiju where like they came from sp well no another dimension or whatever and like so they're kind of like space monsters but not really they're like underwater too it's it, the origin is so cool and the design of all the, the monsters in it is so cool like they have their base design whatever they are and then they have like their own secondary color which is like this neon look and uh it, it, it like oh i can't i can't remember uh, knife head you know he, he has like that yellow he has like the yellow secondary color um uh leatherback is has like a blue kind of color scheme to him and then you know slattern which is just a, like a huge kaiju uh i mean it's just like the knife head or no i already talked about knife head uh their, their axe head or whatever i mean it's just like all these really cool monsters rage you which is really cool which a lot of people kind of thought was like rodan in a way but um but yeah those kaiju are just so freaking cool and i just i love pacific rim so much and those kaiju just made it awesome so definitely gotta have those monsters in it all right, coming in at number two, we have the Cloverfield monster. Yes, I thought you guys, I haven't forgotten about this guy. This guy, man, Cloverfield, oh, gee. this movie, 
it is it's, all, it's also one of my all-time favorite kaiju movies because it's done in a way it's it's the whole found footage like oh it's holding the camera kind of style um and and that's what makes it so cool because there hasn't been a kaiju movie that's done that yet and it, and it shows what it's what it feels like to be in a kaiju attack you know and you're running around the streets and like oh the big monsters right there in front of your face and and it's so cool and i love that movie the characters in it were great but but the monster we didn't really see him that much. I mean, there were a few shots where we got a good look at it, but now you can get some good internet pictures of him, like where you get to see the whole figure. And uh, obviously the Muto from Godzilla 2014, you can definitely tell there was a lot of inspiration from the Cloverfield monster, because the Cloverfield monster was such an original design, so unique, so cool looking. Um, definitely, you, you have to, the Cloverfield monster, just a freaking love that monster. So that's definitely my number two pick. All right, now what can top Cloverfield and what can be close to the King of the Monsters? Well, gotta give it to King Kong, of course. The American Kaiju, yeah. Uh, I, you know, you, you can't, once again, you can't have a monster list without mentioning King Kong. King Kong was one of the oldest monsters, one of the first monsters, one of the first kaiju to ever come about. Now there's a little bit of, like, some people have some controversy over if King Kong's really a kaiju because he's not super big, but I consider him a kaiju because he is a giant monster. Um, now whether his background, if he was radiated or whatever, I don't know, but when it comes to it, King Kong, definitely my number one pick, other than Godzilla when it comes to giant monsters. King Kong is just, I mean, what can you say? Everyone knows about King Kong. I did my King Kong with Bond, watched all the movies. I, I love pretty much all of them. Um, and it's just, it's freaking King Kong. I mean, it's a giant ape going around, jumping on buildings and whatnot. I mean, it's like, you, you just, you can't hate that. So um, definitely King Kong is my number one pick. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching my list. Post in the comments what your favorite monsters are, uh, non-Godzilla movie monsters are. I would love to hear them. And as always, stay big G fans.